time. So what about Time Out of Mind? What does that title, what does that album title mean? Well, it, it means time immemorial. It's a period in the past so long ago that our specific knowledge of it has, has, has vanished. Although there may be cultural echoes or items of social significance that still persist in our current world. That's what Time Out of Mind is. And that goes to the heart of the chapter in my book on Bob Dylan and history and his use of the past, which looks at his associations, often, often ignored associations with an American cultural tradition called transcendentalism. It's largely ignored because many Dylan writers are from Europe and we don't really learn about transcendentalism in Europe. It was a religious literary movement that grew from a Unitarian church in New England in the early and mid 19th century, the 1800s. And it's two, two of its key tenets were individualism and an abiding belief in the power of nature. Um, transcendentalist writers were ubiquitous in the North American education curriculum during the 1950s when Dylan was at school. And it's almost impossible to conceive that he could have avoided exposure to those beliefs and principles, which would have been familiar to every student of literature. In fact, in Chronicles Volume 1, he, he memorably writes about visiting New York Public Library to seek out what he called bearded ideologues of high abstraction from the mid 19th century who had a particular understanding of America's geography and its religious ideals, which is a very good description of some transcendentalists. Transcendentalists visible in his output include Henry David Thoreau, Wolf, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Walt Whitman, and another 19th century writer connected to that tradition called Herman Melville. Um, Trust yourself is an Emerson quote. I contain multitudes is a line from Whitman. The final verse of Cross the Green Mountain, a song he wrote for the Civil War movie, Gods and Generals, basically retells one of Whitman's poems come up from the fields father and the influence of melville is clear most of all in bob dylan's 115th dream um which is a song constructed uh, around the metaphor of moby dick um, which has repeated allusions to that story including uh, a wonderful moment in the song when dylan returns to the ship in his dream which is in the pequod in melville's book and there's a parking ticket on the mast which is a modern twist on the gold doubloon that's pinned there in the book by Captain Ahab, which is one of the key metaphors in the original novel, Moby Dick. And 50 years later, in fact, Dylan's Nobel Prize literature acknowledged how, in his words, that theme and all it implies would work its way into more than a few of my songs. 